So we covered, a lot of speakers covered yesterday that we are either in a perfect storm or in a very good time to start looking at things in a different way. And the challenges that the dairy industry faces are not that different to the ones that I've been hearing over the last day and a half over here. Increase in, in farm size, um, in some cases in the dairy industry, less farms. Cows that have very good genetics but become very susceptible to the management that we do. A lot of issues around attracting and retaining labor to work on farms. Tasks that are repetitive, that take a lot of time, that are tiring, that are physical. The increasing demand of consumers to be able to understand and have certainty that the product that they're eating is absolutely safe, but also all the attributes that come with it. And last but not least, all the environmental pressures that either we are suffering in one way or the other, or we need to start to be responsible and accountable for too. So there's many options available to tackle these challenges. And the one that we've decided to tackle is around technology. And why? Because we believe that the greatest opportunity is around the, the, the big increase in development and adoption of technology. In many cases that comes from other industries, call it military, call it aviation, call it health, that are coming at a rapid speed into agriculture and offer a huge opportunity for us to start doing things differently, to get a higher resolution of what's happening on our farms and be able to manage things in a different way. Particularly today, I'm gonna to cover robotic milking, but it's very similar to other technologies that we might see out there. It's very similar to autonomous devices that might move in a paddock, to drones, or to devices like the one that is in the trade display next door that can monitor feed bank, what's happening in the feed bank. At the end of the day, there are platforms that hold a huge amount of sensors that allow us to see things differently. So if we think about robotic milking as a milk harvesting platform, we are probably tackling it wrong because for me, it's a data harvesting platform. Every single time a cow walks in to a robotic milking station, there's almost 250 variables that get logged in the software. Variables that we as humans, if we were doing the task, we either do not see we do not see to that scale, or sometimes we don't even understand what they actually mean. So it's how do we start capturing all these insights of what's happening to the animals on the farm and in the interaction with the whole system to try to better manage the system moving forward. And in your cases, it might be the biometrics that were covered yesterday when new cattle arrive in a feedlot. What are the things that you're capturing there, but potentially moving forward, what new things you could be capturing to do things in a new and different way. But there's always a technology path in, in, in development and both adoption. This is a typical adoption curve of, of technology. You might have seen it before. But basically, we are, for most of these technologies, on the left-hand side of that graph, working with innovators or early, early adopters of technology and not the vast majority of producers that are out there. And they tend to be different by characteristics themselves, but they're also normally willing to put up with the pain points that come in the initial days or years of the technology. So my first message is please support these initial adopters. In the dairy industry, those that adopted it first, some of them have suffered a lot. They've been looked at with a lot of farmers waiting for them to fail, saying you made the wrong decision, this is not the path you should be going, and questioning the industry as a whole. So as we dis they discussed somebody earlier today, some of these technologies will fail, but it is that failure that will move the whole industry forward by culling the things that don't work and refining the ones that do. The second concept is this curve of technology and every technology tends to see the same thing, where something is launched in a technology trigger, there's a huge expectation that this will completely change the world and the way we do everything, and then it falls in this trough of disillusionment, where we think, look, wait, it was not that great, 
and sometimes it picks up and finds its happy medium somewhere else. So we need to understand that technologies will go through this cycle as they evolve and get adopted. And this brings the other challenge that sometimes we talk about, is it plug and play? Is it plug and pay? Or is it plug and pray? So depending where you are, you'll go through these cycles. But again, it's natural that in the development of the technologies, these things will happen. So in the journey of technology adoption in the last years, we've looked at it through this framework. Consider, invest, and operate. Consider is all about awareness. It's about independent and unbiased information to industry of what is available. It is about R&D that can happen overseas or local adaptation of R&D to a new technology. It's providing you as producers with independent information of what is available. But then you will have to sit down and go through the invest phase where you will consider how that particular technology will either solve a problem or untap an opportunity that you're trying to capture. And you will have to try to imagine how those technologies will disrupt your teams, your farms, and the way that you operate. And that's really difficult, because it is really difficult to understand which questions should I be asking when considering a new technology and trying to imagine how some of these technologies can disrupt your farm. But it is also equally important to understand the expectations of this technology. I've seen far too many unrealistic expectations of what the technology can deliver. Technology will fail. Technology will run out of battery. Technology will depend on other factors. So we need to understand what are the real expectations that we are looking at when considering technology. And finally, if you decide to invest in that technology, because a decision might be, I will not invest, you will have to operate. And that is also a journey, a journey in transitioning from where you are to adopting technology, but also to optimizing and moving to extracting the real value of that technology. And in most cases, the support network that you had until the day you turned on that device might not be the one that needs to move forward with you or needs to acquire new skills or you need to look at different ways of doing things. So it's really important to understand how you as a person using the technology, the team, the farm will be operating and using that technology. And robotic milking is not a new technology. The early Concepts are from the 70s and 80s. The first commercial farm was installed in the Netherlands in 1992. The first commercial farm in Australia is from 2001. There was a 12-year project of R&D that started in 2006 called Future Dairy that basically was not looking at the technology per se, but how did that technology, how could it be adopted to the Australian conditions? And they actually even developed a robotic rotary that is more suitable to the Australian conditions. Then in 2018, a four-year project started called Milking Edge, that it was much more about working with the farmers that had adopted the technology and rolling out a training and an extension program. And finally, where we are today, that the 60, so 1.5% of the industry is operating robotic milking in Australia. There's around 40,000 farms in the world. So still small, still in that innovator phase. But what I want to highlight in this slide is the importance of the journey, the importance of local R&D, and the importance of partnerships to achieve success. What are the key concepts of robotic milking and of robotics in general? In robotic milking, first, all the milking-related tasks are automated, so they don't require a person to physically be there during the milking process. So that automatically frees up from a task that takes anywhere between 40 and 60% of the day on a farm. It is voluntary because it doesn't require you to go and fetch cows and bring them to the dairy. Cows come and go on their own, and it's distributed because it operates 24 hours. Now think which tasks on your farms would completely be disrupted by using a robot that operates 24 hours, that doesn't require or is not tied up to having people there doing a certain task. 
Because yes, there's dairies, most of dairies milk twice a day. You could milk three times a day, but you require either a third shift or tweaking things around the system. This completely separates the requirement of people from the requirement of the task. It is completely a level of individual farm management, of individual animal management, sorry, around how many times we milk the cows, where do the animals go in the farm, how much do we feed the animals something that is not really possible in a conventional dairy. The question is what level of management do we start doing if we could really tap into the potential of every single animal on the farm? If I knew every single animal, what that animal was, what are the requirements of number of milkings, what should I be feeding that animal, where should I send her? But this doesn't transform people or the cows. What it does it's, it allows new understandings, interactions, and possibilities between them. And this is really important. It doesn't change the fundamental process knowledge of biology, but it does unlock what can we do. And one of the real things that it changes is that we start looking at almost everything through data. So we go from this physical cow to this virtual cow to a report. So the level of granularity and detail that we can get from a cow in a robotic dairy, coupled with all the sensors that are there, is enormous. Way more than what I needed for research when I was doing my PhD. So the question doesn't come about what do I, what do I do with it, what, what data do I need? It comes much more to what question will I ask that data to find the cow that requires my attention to understand what is the intervention that I need to do. And the pro problem that I see is that we've magnified the amount of data, but not always adding value. So in a dairy, we had 100 cows, we produced 2,000 liters. The average cow produced 20 liters. From there, we moved to herd testing, where monthly we get a photo of how much every cow produces. From there, we installed milk meters, where for every milking, we know how much every cow produces. And with robotic milking, we know at a quarter level how much each cow produces every time she walks into the dairy. But the question is how much has decision making changed from one end of that graph to the other one? In 99% of the farms, we are taking decisions on the right in the same way that we were on the left. So it's not about the technology and the data, it's about the question that you will ask the data and how that will change the way you take management decisions on the farm. And the best decisions are the coupling of the data with your experience and intuition and the context of what was happening on the farm. So data alone will not take that decision. But we start moving from groups to individuals. This is a graph that shows, forget about the axis, but the spread in milking frequency in a robotic dairy. Traditional dairies milk twice a day. Here we have from 3.5 to one milking per day. In a trial done at Sydney University around cattle um, eating from a molasses lick block, we see a difference in behavior between animals that were offered access to that device 24 hours a day eating between zero and 200 grams per day from that block. And there's always a proportion of animals that do not visit these devices. So it's how do we start understanding animal management and how do we manage this variability to be able to achieve the goals that we want from our system? How do we use the data to move from the actual to the potential performance of cows and the farm? This is a graph that shows basically that the amount of cows or milkings that happen throughout a 24 hour period in a robotic dairy, and you see that dip in early hours of the morning, which ironically is the time that farmers milk in most of the dairy farms. Cows do not come to the dairy at that time. And we did some modeling, and we basically saw that you have the potential to increase this by 60% if you fill in all the gaps in the dairy. That would mean that the average Australian farm that has four robots if they were operating at an optimum level, they could require three. So again, how do we start adopting the technology to achieve the aims that we want?
But then how do we tweak the system to optimize the performance of the system as a whole? And we started building decision support tools because we recognized that most software out there, and that's a different conversation, the amount of software that is out there, most of the time shows data that is either a photo that doesn't tell you any insight at all, or it's a reflection of the past. And data should allow you as an operator to take decisions moving forward. So we put together, and by we I mean a PhD student, not me, um, put together a smart model that developed a decision support tool that the farmer can input the data of where he is and then set a target scenario. So it will be moving from the current to the optimized scenario and it indicates the farmer which things he should be tweaking to achieve most impact there. Now again, this is a, an example from dairy, but think if you and your system, you should, be oper you should be installing a technology, it gives you data, how does it allow you to take a better decision that is forward looking, that is predictive. So not only about what's happening and what happened, but what will happen or how do I change things for things to happen. The other thing that this technology has allowed us is a, a, an increase, if we want to call it, in animal behavior and well-being. By removing the person that was there, we started see, seeing much more freedom in the way animals move and when we measure cortisol or flight distance or temperament and all these things, we start seeing an improvement in animal behavior and well-being. So I've kind of believed that for, for a long time we've got used to kind of pushing and shoving and taking animals from one area to the other and locking them up and not necessarily working with the animal to achieve the results that we want to achieve. So I think there is an opportunity with technology about allowing the animal to express their potential and work much more with the animal to improve their welfare, but also with a benefit to the people. And when we look at labor, not everybody that adopted robotic milky or that looks at technology is wanting to reduce labor and remove labor from the farm. A lot of people are wanting the flexibility, the shorter days, remove the early starts, the consistency of the task that happens every single day in the same way, regardless if it rains, if it's hot, if it was a footy game, if last night was Christmas. Things happen always in the same way. It allows to increase the efficiency of operators and it allows the operator to concentrate in tasks that have a higher value. But yes, we will require new skills, we will create new jobs, and we will replace some jobs. And this is the other thing that we did. We developed a whole series of training that currently sits online because when we went to launch it, it was March 2020, we couldn't do anything face to face. So everything was online, but a series of online modules that people can go at their own pace. They cover key farm management areas and they allow farmers, the staff, service providers, consultants, technicians, the banker, students, to get into this. We've had four courses so far to date, and there's around 300 people that have registered and done one or more modules there. The interesting thing here is that only 30% of them were farmers, 40% were consultants or service providers, but then there was 25% of students. Students that are going through university today have very little exposure to the use of technology to help them change the way they will provide a service moving forward when they graduate. And that to me is a problem. I think we are missing out and the development of technology will go way ahead and faster than the way that we as an industry can keep up to speed and train and upskill our people. But we need to remember that technology at the end of the day is a tool. It will, it will not replace everything of human beings. And it's a tool that depending who uses it, the benefit that they will achieve. If you give me a hammer, I'm completely useless. So it's not about the tool, it's about how do you use the tool on the farm. And we are not all starting in the same point. Some people are starting way ahead and the jump or the change or the leap is shorter or easier or faster. 
So we need to understand where are we today and how do we think 10, 15, 20 years ahead and how do we prepare ourselves, our teams, our farms and our industry to be much better prepared for this moving forward. Because if I look forward, I have absolutely no doubt at all that technology will increase its development and its adoption. People ask me, look, we only have 60 robotic dairies, like adoption is slow, this will never take off. Do you think there will be 50% of dairy farms next year in Australia operating robots? No. How long will it take? I don't know. But I've got no doubt at all that in 50 years, farms will not look like they look today. They will have much more sensors, much more automation as a whole. We will have much more devices that talk to each other, much more devices that talk and interact with people and with animals. And we need to understand what will that mean? Somebody posed in a, in a, in a conference four, three years ago, what would happen if 25% of the cows were milked by robots? What would that mean for the farms, but for an industry as a whole? And to be honest, I don't think we are prepared because we don't really quantify the impact that this might have. And unfortunately, we need to start preparing today, although we do not see that adoption, because otherwise it'll be too late. And in that preparation, I think we will have a lot of data, and we need to start looking at where we will use that data on the farm. But I'm also convinced that that data will cross the farm gate to the consumer. The data will leave with your cattle or with the milk that leaves the farm. And that data might be used for traceability, to certify things, to prove things. But we need to be prepared of what this will mean for our supply chain as a whole. And again, I don't think we are prepared. And therefore, I think we do have a big opportunity as an industry as a whole. I do think there's a lot of exciting things happening in the industry. And here I have the ones that are happening in dairy, but over the last day and a half, there's a lot of exciting things happening in beef. The question is how much are we doing to couple that with attracting and retaining talent into our industry? And I don't think we are doing enough. I think that traditionally, we've gone and told our story to an audience that up to an extent is a captive audience. We've always looked for animal science, vets, agronomists, and those kind of skills. I think we need to be telling our story to a much wider audience of skills that is out there. That if we do not tell our story, somebody else will tell it for it, or somebody else will tell another story, and those skills will just go somewhere else. So I think we do have the responsibility of sharing all those things that are exciting in our industry. Because at the end of the day, I'm fully convinced, and I have no question at all, that adoption, development and adoption of technology will only increase from here. But the key will always be the people that are involved and behind all this. It'll be Gary and Bev, farmers that were about to retire and adopted robotic technology and have expanded around 15 years in the dairy industry. There will, in the bottom, there was an electrician that came into dairy because he didn't have to milk twice a day. It's Nick on the top right that studied animal science, was about to go and work somewhere else, and they installed this in his family farm and stayed there and is in the industry. So the key will always be in the people. The question is, what are we doing to really tell that story to them to really upskill them and to really attracting them to an industry that, again, I have no question will continue to be here in the future. Thank you very much.